The National Broadcasting Company's Grand Marquee. Grand Marquee, lighted by stars, twinkling, glowing, blazing with myriad lights and colors against the night sky. The National Broadcasting Company's mammoth billboard announces another exciting evening in the world of make-believe. Tonight, the Grand Marquis announces a bright new comedy by Celie Glester and Merwin Gerard entitled Hold That Memory, starring Jim Amici. And now, before the curtain rises, here's a greeting and a word of introduction from our star himself, Jim Amici. Thank you. Thank you, George Stone, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's play concerns a psychology professor who took himself and his work too seriously. Yes, the head ruled the heart of young Dr. Stephen Holliday, and it remains for a character named Theodore to tap our hero firmly on the head and put the heart in control. But that's getting ahead of the story, which begins as the good professor is about to entrain for the East. Look, Jean, there's Professor Holliday. Yes, isn't he handsome? <laughs> Wait till I powdered my nose. Oh, come on, he's training me right any minute. <laughs> Already. Professor Holliday. Oh, hello, Miss Palmer, Miss Stone. Hello, Dr. Holliday. We've brought your psychology notes along. Hmm, <laughs> but I thought... Um, please stop giggling, Miss Stone. Uh, Dr. Clark should be long before train time, but we persuaded him to... <laughs> I mean, he asked us to bring you these lecture notes. Well, thank you both very much. <laughs> My uh, train should be in right away, so there's no need for you girls to wait. Oh, it's quite all right. You see, uh, there is something we want to uh, ask you. No, Miss Palmer. Oh, Professor, you promised. I did? I don't recall any such promise. Well, uh, you told some of the other girls about themselves. Now, girls, I'm very busy. A train leaves this station in exactly three minutes. Please, but you professor. can tell us a lot in three minutes. Go on, Professor. Well, very well. To begin with, you were both, as always, attractively dressed. Oh, thank you, Professor. Yes. There are, of course, slight but nevertheless quite significant differences in your personalities. In your case, Miss Stone, I might say that you wear your clothes with a careless air and with an extremely provocative flair. Really? Whereas Miss Palmer, avoiding extreme styles, wears hers with calmness, conceit, and a deliberate indifference. I do. Of course. Oh, you're so interesting, Professor. Go on. That is your fundamental fault. What is? Your interest in men. Oh, yes. That, that is my trouble. Trouble? You won't have any trouble with men, Miss Palmer. They'll have trouble with you. Why, Professor. And this in spite of the fact that you never have the seams of your stocking straight. Oh, professor. You also, Miss Palmer, have developed a psychosis about men. Oh, no. Oh, yes. You pose in theatrical attitudes for their benefit. But I... You both assume mistakenly that every man is interested in you, but doesn't want to make his interest too apparent. Why, yes, but... While I've never conversed with you privately before, let me refute some of the pet theories which I'm sure you have. Oh, yes, Professor, please do. The world does not revolve around the attraction of a man for a woman. It doesn't, Professor? Also, the main purpose of a young woman attending co-educational school is not that of finding a husband. Professor Holliday. What else? That's all. I've already squandered... One minute and 47 seconds. Precious time, which I am convinced has benefited neither of us. Now, you can do a favor for me, Miss Stone. Oh, of course, anything. You can learn not to flutter your eyelashes. It's purely artificial coquetry. Well, I, I, and uh, close your mouth, Miss Stone. Oral inflammation is neither healthy nor attractive. Well, oh, I... hello, Clark. Oh, uh, hello, Steve. Uh, thank you, girls, for bringing the notes down. Oh, that's quite all right, Dr. Clark. And thank you very much, Professor Holliday, for your very interesting character analysis. Yes, thank you. Uh, don't go, girls. I want to tell you about your giggling habits. Very unpopular with men, and if I were oh, you... Uh, look, uh, let them go. I think they've had enough. You know, uh, I wish you'd get out of this habit, Steve. Well, I was merely explaining to them. I know, I know. Uh, what do you mean, you know? Now, look, Steve, I just saw the dean. What about it? Well, he wanted me to mention that his wife was a trifle hurt last night. Last night? Yes, after everyone else had complimented her on her gown, it was hardly necessary for you to point out that pink is not becoming to a married woman. Well, it isn't. Statistics show that men propose to women in pink. And uh, Professor Edelweiss was quite put out because you accused him of catching cold by walking barefooted down the drafty corridor of his rooming house to ease his bunions. Well, it, it slipped out, Clark. I, I couldn't help myself. Steve. Well... Now, look, you're a remarkable psychologist, but uh, this habit of yours of probing into people's innermost secrets is making you a social leper. Well, I, I only try to be honest with people, Clark. Well, I'm glad you're taking this vacation, Steve, and I hope it'll do you a lot of good. As a matter of fact, I hope you meet some nice girl in pink. <laughs> no, that's not for me, Clark. I've learned too much about women. <laughs> it would do you good, Steve. Might even make you unbend a little. Professor Stone is conducting a series of lectures in Chicago, you know. It's an opportunity I can't afford to miss. Well... Here's my train. Goodbye, Steve, but don't forget now, keep an eye open for that girl in pink. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, hello, Porter. I'll uh, make up your bed next, sir. Fine. I'm going into the washroom. Let me know when it's ready. Yeah. Good evening, friend. Can't sleep, huh? Hmm? Oh, I didn't see you in the corner there. <laughs> I can't sleep either. Wheels. Wheels? The wheels bother you? Oh, frightfully. They go round and round. That's what I can't stand. Wheels that go around in circles. <laughs> mm. Uh, did you see Eustace out there? Doesn't bother him. He likes wheels. Oh, he does? Yes. But, uh, he's resting now. Someone dropped four sleeping tablets in his coffee. <laughs> uh, Mr. Eustace is taking me to Bainbridge, you know. Oh, he is? Well, that's nice. <laughs> I'll bet you don't know what Bainbridge is. <clears throat> well, from the general tenor of this conversation, I'd guess that it's a mental institution. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, they think I'm a mental case. Yes, they do. Yeah. They say I have flashes of mental instability. I see, just flashes. Oh, but don't be afraid. I'm in a lucid period now. <laughs> Bainbridge is a new place for me. I've never been there before. Oh, are you coming from another institution? Mm-hmm. From Harding's. I left there yesterday. Why? Complications. Nurses and stuff. Well, what do you mean? It happens to me wherever I go. I've had nurse trouble in five institutions. Dr. Harding thought it best for the morale of the staff if I left. The nurses were all fighting over me. Well, very interesting. Yes, isn't it? The resemblance is amazing. The, the what? Well, haven't you noticed, friends? We bear a striking resemblance to each other. Oh, really? Well, yes. Uh, I noticed it when you boarded the train. Look, uh, I'll stand up here by the mirror. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, you're quite right. We do look alike. Uh -huh. Same build, facial contours, sloping forehead, everything except the eyes. They say I have piercing eyes. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Uh... Uh, Dr. Stephen Holliday. Oh, yes. Uh, Dr. Holliday, perhaps you'd be interested in my new discovery. New discovery? Yes. Yes, I would very much. Well, uh, you see this object I have in my hand? Mm-hmm. At first glance, what would you say it was? Well, it looks very much like an ordinary flashlight to me. It does to everyone, but it isn't. No? No, it's not an ordinary flashlight. It glows in Technicolor. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> a Technicolor flashlight? Yes, it's the only one in existence. Mm, I can quite imagine. May I see it? Sorry, the patent is still pending. Oh, I see. <laughs> but uh, if you'll turn around while I adjust the phonostat... I'll be happy to demonstrate. The, the Fornestat? Yes, the Fornestat is secret. My own invention. I see. Now, uh, you turn around and don't look. All right, I'll turn around. Ah, uh, that's fine. <laughs> now, don't look. No fair peeping. I won't. Hold still, Doctor. You'll see the glow in just a second. Here it comes. <coughs> oh. oh. Oh, my goodness. Poor Doctor. He's out like a light. And I wanted to show him my Technicolor flashlight. <laughs> Why do I do these things? Oh, yes, I remember now. Theodore must trade places with Dr. Holliday. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, oh, uh, hello, Porter. Uh, come in, come in. The bed is made up. Of, uh, yes, uh, Porter? What happened to the gentleman? Uh, he's fainted. It, it must be the heat. Oh, uh, Porter. Uh, yes, sir? Would you like to see my Technicolor flashlight? You a Technicolor what? Uh, no, I guess it'd be too technical for you. The, the gentleman, he looks fainted all right. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I better get uh, No, doctor. no, uh, you help me get him to his compartment. Why, well, yes, uh, right away, sir. You see, Porter, he's a mental case, and I'm his doctor. You mean he's, he's crazy? Oh, yes, yes, the dangerous type. But don't worry, Porter, we're taking him to the Bainbridge rest home. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Porter. Uh, is this the stop for Bainbridge? Yes, sir. We're coming into the station. Oh, that's fine. Uh, did you uh, need any help with the gentleman? Uh, no, thanks. He's still resting. But you tell Mr. Eustace uh, that's the man in number six that our patient is waking up. Oh, uh, here, Porter. Oh, oh yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'll sure tell him. <laughs> Say, Porter. Hmm? Porter, have you seen my patient? You mean the crazy man? Yes, yes, Mr. Theodore. Oh, uh, he's right here in his compartment. Oh, Judas Priest, <laughs> am I lucky. Say, has he caused any trouble? Oh, no, no, sir. He's just been resting. Good. You see, Porter, I, <laughs> I overslept. 
You sure did. <laughs> Say, how did Mr. Theodore get in this compartment? Well, the other gentleman left him here. The other gentleman? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, thanks, Porter. Okay, Mr. Theodore, wake up. Hello, are you Mr. Eustace from Harding? Yeah, that's right. My name's Eustace. I'm the attendant from Bainbridge, Joe Davis. Well, glad to meet you, Joe. Hmm, Mr. Man? Yes, he's had a good night's rest. Mm hmm. Still asleep, huh? Eh? Yeah. Come on. Wake up, Mr. Theodore. Mm hmm. Come on, give uh, me a hand, Joe. Right. Okay. Yeah. Stand up, Mr. Theodore. Yeah. Theodore? Yes. Yeah. Who, who are you? Why, this is Joe Davis from Bainbridge, Mr. Theodore. So, uh, what are you talking about? Just relax, Mr. Theodore. We'll take you to the car. Well, I, I don't understand. Why are you addressing me as Mr. Theodore? No, no, Mr. Theodore. That's not my name. Oh, it's not? <laughs> crazy as a loon. Well, I'm, I'm not crazy and I'm not Theodore. Oh, yeah? You got any identification? Well, certainly right here, this billfold. Yes, Mr. Theodore? Well, this isn't my billfold. And these, these clothes... Where'd they get them? Well, they fit you, don't they? Well, well yes. yes. Yes, but... And this driver's license. <laughs> you sure have plenty of identification, Mr. Theodore. Now, just a moment. I'm certain we can clear up the entire matter. Uh, well, we ain't got time, but there's plenty of time where you're going to. Come on, Joe. I tell you, I'm Stephen Holliday, professor of psychology at State University. Yeah, yeah sure you are. Grab him, Joe. Bainbridge Rest Home. Oh, it's you, Mr. Davis. Uh, he put up a struggle? Why, yes, I think the doctor would want you to remove the straight jacket now. Yes, I'll tell Dr. Bainbridge. Goodbye. Dr. Bainbridge, it's Joe Davis. They have Mr. Theodore outside. Good. I want you to devote a lot of your time to this Theodore. He has wealthy relatives. Isn't that right, Dr. Yeager? Uh, precisely, <laughs> Dr. Bainbridge, precisely. You understand, Eloise? Yes, I understand, Dr. Yeager. In his records sent on by Harding, there's a notation which... Uh, <laughs> I have the case history right here, Doctor. It seems that Theodore has moments of uh, a high emotion. Oh, another one of those. The doctor's dilemma and the nurse's terror. Uh, precisely, Eloise, precisely. I know how to handle that type, Doctor. He's rather insistent. Hmm, aren't all men. Uh, uh, well, uh, Dr. Bainbridge was just uh, just trying to protect you, Eloise. Thank you, Dr. Yeager. Well, then, uh, you may bring him in now. Welcome to Bainbridge, Mr. Theodore. You may come in now. I would like to make it clear that my name is not Theodore. This is Dr. Bainbridge, and this is Dr. Yeager. What's your name? Uh, I am to be your nurse. I said, what's your name? Well, I'm Miss Sullivan. Your first name? Uh, you will address her as Miss Sullivan. Thank you. Now, what was your first name? Eloise. Hmm? Very poor choice. Doesn't go at all well with Sullivan. And, uh, by the way, your slip is showing. Why? Now, uh, sit down, Mr. Theodore. <coughs> uh, nurse, will you prepare Mr. Theodore's room? Yes, Doctor. Dr. Bainbridge, I assume that you're an intelligent man, in spite of several indications to the contrary. In the first place, let me state that my name is not Theodore. <laughs> I see. Do I sound like Theodore? <laughs> well, My I... name is Stephen Holliday. I'm a professor of advanced psychology at State University. Certainly, Professor. <laughs> of course, you have proper identification to prove it. No, I do not. This Theodore of yours obviously exchanged clothes with me while I was lying unconscious. Naturally. Hallucinations, Dr. Bainbridge. Hallucinations. It checks with the case history. You are very irritating, Dr. Yeager. There are any number of ways to prove what I say. I'm sure there are. <laughs> Precisely. Don't humor me. We have a complete file on you, Mr. Theodore. Your physical characteristics, general appearance, and education. My first impression of you was wrong. Eh? Hey, what was that? You're not intelligent. You're stupid and opinionated. I shall give you three things to do, any one of which will prove beyond a question of a doubt that I am actually Professor Stephen Holliday and not Theodore. Of course. Interesting, Kate. Very interesting. First, get in touch with State University. Find out when Stephen Holliday left the campus and what his destination was. Oh, very well. Uh, naturally. <laughs> Second, telephone Professor Clark of State University and he'll clear up the matter instantly. We'll do that, too. Third, there's a meeting at the home of Professor Stone in Chicago. I am even now supposed to be there. Professor Elias Stone? You know him? By reputation only, as he knows me. You're quite clever, Mr. Theodore. He is clever, Dr. Bainbridge. I see you're determined to treat me as a metal case. 
Now, I warn you, Doctor, that if you do not make every effort to clear up this situation, I shall hold you personally responsible in the court of law. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be very happy here. <laughs> Extremely happy. And I'm equally sure that you are two of the most obstinate men I've ever met. All right, Mr. Theodore, I promise that Dr. Yeager will investigate along the lines you suggest. Good. Dr. Yeager, I can perceive that you have traveled extensively, that you're single, and that you should wear glasses. Although you may be thinking of taking our very attractive nurse to a nightclub, you certainly will be wasting your time taking her home afterwards. <laughs> Precisely, Mr. Theodore. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> Elementary. Although I will admit there is something elusive and attractive about Eloise. You will refer to your nurse as Miss Sullivan. You know, if I had more time, I'd enjoy spending a few days here. By the way, do you label the patient? Now, just a moment, sir. Uh, control yourself, Jager. Remember, patients with Mr. Theodore's background are always right. Ah, Eloise. You are not to call your nurse Eloise. Eloise, a beautiful name. Your room is prepared. I see you've adjusted your slip. Yes. Uh, I mean, yes, the room is prepared. There's a smudge on the tip of your nose. Oh. Uh, nurse, when you're finished with Mr. Theodore, I'd like to speak to you. All right, Doctor. Come with me, Theodore. That's not my name at all, Eloise. Operator, this is Dr. Bainbridge. Get me Dean Atkinson, State University. <laughs> Come in. Ah, Eloise. Now, look, Mr. Theodore, this has gone far enough. What has? What are you carrying those books for? Don't avoid the issue. I mean this business of annoying the, the guests here. Annoying? Have there been complaints? Well, no, but you've been talking to Miss Carter and Mr. Longworth. Ah, now, there's an interesting case. Who? That fellow Longworth. I helped him. Really, I did, Eloise. What do you mean by that? Well, given a period of time, I'm sure I could cure his delusion. He thinks he's a camel. We both know it isn't water he drinks. That's the point. Exactly. You're a peculiar individual, Mr. Theodore. My name is not Theodore, despite those idiots downstairs. Idiots? Yes, and particularly Dr. Yeager. Let's not discuss Dr. Yeager. Why not? Now, look, Eloise, I'm a reasonable man, but I'm also determined to get out of here. I must get the Professor Stones. Perhaps Professor Stephen Holliday must. And you don't believe I'm Holliday? I, uh, that's what I brought these books for. Oh. Let's see. Hmm, oh, yes. Now, what is the essential factor in Flugel's conception of the inferiority complex? The libido. That's right. Now, Flugel made some experiments when he was still in Vienna. What... Mass indoctrination principles and the effect on the rational mind. Well, yes. But he was wrong. What? Dr. Irving Frenessy devotes a full chapter to the experiments in his book. Absolutely proves that Flugel's experiments were made under extraordinary That's conditions. That's enough. You're convinced I know what I'm talking about? Well, it does seem that... Look at me. Yes? Do I look crazy? But, uh, no. Uh, you're confused. I'm not confused. You listen to those idiots downstairs. I, I, I don't like them, especially Dr. Why, Yeager. Why, Dr. Don't Yeager... Don't offend him. Have you noticed his twitch? What kind of a twitch? An amorous twitch on the right side of his face. I notice it whenever he looks at you. Men have different reactions to women. They'll be nervous, their scalps will itch, they might display their condition by blushing. And you? Me? <laughs> well, it's been my experience, but so far at least I have no definite reactions to members of the opposite sex. Your record tells a different story. Well, that's another point which should help prove that they're not my records and that I'm not Mr. Theodore. Perhaps. There's your hands, why are you rubbing them? Hmm? Am I? Let me see. Perspiration on your palms. You must be nervous. Nervous? What do I have to be nervous about? I'm sure I don't know. Does anything in here bother you? Now, I do not possess any sort of psychosis. Oh, perhaps because you really are Professor Halliday and Dr. Bainbridge won't believe you. Perhaps you're frustrated. Oh, no. It couldn't be your nurse, could it? Eloise. Uh, yes? Perhaps there is something behind your attractive face, a spark of real intelligence. It's a funny thing. You don't sound like the other patients here. Whatever I sound like, I'm not insane, not the slightest bit. Although I do feel rather strange at the moment, and I... I yes? You upset me. Perhaps that accounts for your nervousness. Your hair should have an upsweep, very effective. I've noticed it on other women. It'd flatter you. Is this all part of your technique, Professor? Technique? For what? For influencing a woman. Will you do me a favor, Eloise? What? If you believe in me at all, will you go down to Bainbridge and make sure he finds out the truth? Get him to make further investigations? All right. You do believe me? Well, I... Well, what's troubling you? You love me when you can't make up your mind. Mm. This conversation is fast becoming improper for a nurse's relationship with a patient. I'll speak with Dr. Bainbridge. Thank you, Eloise. And uh, just a moment. Turn around, will you? Why, what for? I... Uh, just as I suspected, your slip is showing again. Why, how dare will you? Will you have tea with me tomorrow? <laughs> I'll stand for no more trouble from Theodore. Where is he? In his room. He's extremely clever, Eloise. 
Uh, Professor Stephen Holliday did leave the state campus to go to Chicago. Doesn't that check with his story? You must remember that Theodore was on the train, too. That's undoubtedly how he got the information about Holliday. And you checked with Professor Elias Stone. Certainly. Professor Holliday is at Stone's house in Chicago now. Well, I have an important consultation in the next room. I'll see you later. Yes, Doctor. Well, that makes it kind of uh, definite, doesn't it? Uh, no doubt about it. He's just a clever lunatic. Mm, he does seem rational, though. At times, yes. And I was so sure. Be careful with him, Eloise. I will. My dear, I've been wanting to ask. Uh, well, Doctor, I have some things I must attend uh, Just a moment, to. my dear. Oh, you must have noticed that I've developed a deep affection for you. Oh, please, Doctor. I, I want you to have dinner with me tonight. But can't we discuss this a little bit later? Better time than now, my dear. Well, I am very busy. Oh, nonsense, I... my dear. Please, Doctor. Well, no more than I expected. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Theodore, uh, we weren't really... You uh, weren't what? Uh, I can only believe my eyes, Eloise. Uh, well, all right, go ahead and believe anything you want to, Mr. Theodore. I believe I warned you, Eloise. At, at, and don't you stand there gawking at me, Jaeger. I've heard just about enough from you, Theodore. And I've heard enough from you. Now, what's going on here? Oh, Theodore's making trouble again. Theodore, I went to the trouble and expense of phoning State University and also Professor Stone. And? That's enough. This is my rest home. I'm in charge of your well-being, and I will tolerate no more nonsense. Nurse? Yes, Doctor. You will take Mr. Theodore back to his room. He must rest. Tomorrow morning, I want to have a long talk with him. Yes, Doctor. I've never come across anyone, anyone, I say, with less intelligence. Oh, 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 oh. Take him away. Now, calm down, Dr. Bainbridge. Don't you know that a man in your position should be able to retain control of himself in any situation? Take this maniac out of here. Uh, come along, Theodore. Uh, do you play checkers? Sit down, Eloise. I think we'll have that little talk right now. Get him out of here. Uh, 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 watch your blood pressure, Doctor. Hypertension. Uh, perhaps we'd better... Uh, Theodore, do you play domino? Jaeger, will you Eloise, please... Eloise, I think we'd better call a couple of attendants. Bainbridge is getting violent. I will not get violent. Eloise, you hear? Call the attendants. If I were certain you were mentally ill, I, I'd take, take strong... You're <laughs> making a spectacle of yourself, Bainbridge. Yes, call the attendants. Will you come in, please? Sure, what's the trouble, Doc? Take him back to his room. Okay, Mr. Theodore. Come along quietly so he won't have to slug you. Bainbridge, can that midget mentality of yours adjust itself to one single thought? Uh, perhaps we should give Theodore the water treatment, Doctor. I don't care. Take him away. Come along, sweetheart. I demand to be released. I'm rapidly reaching the end of my patience, William. Did you hear what I said? Get him out of here. You mean take him back to his room? No, I mean get him out of the Bainbridge rest home. Oh, but, Doctor, we can't do this. What? He's committed here, Dr. Bainbridge. We can't send him away. Oh, we can't, eh? Why not? Well, it's not legal. Oh. Uh, Theodore, wouldn't you like to go out on the lawn for a little croquet? Eloise, please get him out of my rest home. Oh, but we can't let him go, Dr. Bainbridge. Eloise, what was that you said? We can't let you go. It's, it's illegal. Oh, Eloise, do you realize what you're saying? Well, yes, I, I said... Well, I... Do you really want me to stay? Oh, yes, Stephen, I do. Did you hear what she said, Dr. Bainbridge? I don't care what she said. You wanted to get out, didn't you? You claim you were Stephen Holliday. Well, go on. Get out. Get out! No, Dr. Bainbridge, I'm staying. What? <laughs> I'm staying. Take Dr. Holliday to the gate, bag and baggage. Theodore's the name. I'm Holliday most of the time, but right now... Well, what is it? Wheels, do you hear them? I can't stand wheels. They go round and round. I can't stand wheels to go round. Oh. But I've been working on an invention. Square wheels. There's only one thing wrong. Wrong? You bounce up and down when they go round and round. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe I've been here too long. Please, won't somebody take him away? We have to keep him, Doctor. That's the law. <laughs> Come in, Eloise. Close the door. Stephen, aren't you a little ashamed of yourself? No. Nope. Eloise, I don't want to leave here now. Oh? Do you know that you hold your head in an extremely attractive fashion? Uh, has uh, that anything to do with your decision? You confuse me. I have an odd feeling, almost like a little pain. I feel rather strange myself. A rare combination of beauty and intelligence. I've never met anyone like you before. There's a first time for everything, it seems. The way you walk so familiar to me. The way you smile as you're smiling right now as if it's just for me. It is. Your lips have an irresistible appeal. Uh, now, Stephen. Eloise. Yes. <laughs> well, I've... I've... I've never done that before. There's nothing wrong with you. Eloise. Yes? I, I feel that... 
All my life has been barren and empty without true emotion. Eloise. Yes, Stephen? I believe it all ties in with the endocrine glands. Oh, Stephen. I- I've seen it on the faces of students. I observed it in some fellow members of the faculty, and I laughed, but it was merely ignorance on my part. This sensation would make an excellent basis for advanced study. Yes, Stephen. Ah, what are you two doing? Ah, Bainbridge, you again. What do you want? I want you out of here, Professor Holliday. Look, I want you to meet the real Theodore. Hiya, Chum. Oh, hello, Professor Holliday. Oh, cut it out. You know me, Chum. I'm Theodore. Glad to meet you, so am I. We both seem to have the same name, don't we? Oh, no, you don't. You're Stephen Holliday. Precisely, Dr. Bainbridge, precisely. This is Dr. Holliday. But prove it. Does this man have any credentials? But, darling, why do you want to stay here? Why? Because you're here. Personally, I don't blame him. Are you permanent around here, sister? Look, why don't you go back to Professor Stone's in Chicago? Stone? I can't stand that guy. He's crazy. There. (laughs) There, you see? He thinks Professor Stone is crazy. So he must be crazy. No. No, no, that's not the word. I, I mean mentally ill. Look. Look, Bainbridge... Darling, hasn't it entered your head... What? ...that we can both leave? Yes, of course. Why, Eloise, darling, that's a great idea. Hey, Doc, any more nurses around here like her? Oh, shut up, Theodore. Stephen. Yes, dear. Let's hurry. Yes, dear. And I think you'd better get your own clothes back. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. No, dear. Yes, dear. They all do it to you sooner or later. Not not if you handle your relationship with a girl intelligently. Stephen. You see, Theodore, if a man asserts himself at the outset, if he establishes the delicate balance of his own superiority and never allows the Stephen. woman... If the male is firmly and consistently self-assertive in all things, then there's not the slightest doubt but what he'll have a happy married life. Do I make myself clear, Mr. Theodore? Stephen! Uh, yes, dear. Coming, dear. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jim Amici again. We hope you enjoyed tonight's story. On next week's Grand Marquis, we've scheduled a gay South American romance that proves before it's over that obstacles mean nothing when the theme is love thy good neighbor. I hope you'll be listening when Grand Marquis presents Virginia Stafford Lynn's Wedding in Columbia. Good night. Play, Hold That Memory was written by Celie Glaster and Merwin Girard and produced by Norman Felton. Jim Amici played Professor Stephen Holliday and Burl Vaughn played Eloise. The orchestra was conducted by Joseph Galicchio with original music composed by Emil Soderstrom. Next week at this time, Grand Marquis will again blaze with light and color high in the gay airways, inviting you to join our audience for a performance of Virginia Stafford Lynn's Wedding in Columbia, starring Jim Amici. Your announcer is George Stone. Grant Marquis comes to you from our Chicago studios. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.